Hey, welcome. My name is Natasha and thank you for clicking on this video. Welcome to this little budget where we save for the big things in life on a little budget. If you are a returning subscriber, hey budget buds. If this is your first video, please consider sticking around, liking, commenting, and even subscribing. We would love to have you be a budget bud. All right, so this video is going to be about me budgeting my tax refund. So I filed my taxes, um, expected to get it at the end of the month. This is the first time since I have been a working independent adult that I have filed my taxes and have a solid plan for them. So before we get into it, you know, I got to show you the draft. There's always a draft. Here is my draft. Even did the little um, funds breakdown, all of that. So this is what I will have off to the side. And I will be using um, the Elevated Life Co. workbook um, to go through this. See, I opened it differently this time. Um, a few videos ago, I had mentioned that I didn't necessarily care for everything in the book just because I didn't use it or have a need to use it but i want to break the habit of buying things and only using them for a little while before i give up on them so i'm gonna stick with it and try to make it work as best as i can because i paid good money for this and i want to stop being wasteful with my money okay rant over so here is I'm gonna bring you guys in just a little. That should be good. So no date. Um, I did file last week. This is my estimated refund. We're not estimated. This is my refund amount. So that's why I put it in actual uh, $6,204.00. This money will not be going to any fixed expenses, bills or anything like that. Um, I will break down what I'm gonna put towards spending and what I will then put towards my debt, my savings challenge, saving challenges, excuse me, my sinking funds, my account buffer. And then we will break down of my sinking funds, what each fund is going to get. So let's get started. Y'all know I got to put y'all at, at a little slant. So for spending, um, and this is just me being realistic with myself. There are things that I want to get um, for around the house as we de uh, deorganize, <laughs> as we organize and declutter, as we are making space and room for a new baby. Um, so not going to pigeonhole myself into not allocating any spending money and then spending more than I anticipate. So I will be actually budgeting $500 um, towards spending. And again, these are just things that, um, some things that I want, but mostly things that I need to get for around the house. So, and I'm gonna just bring my, my calculator over I think I can come out just a little bit. There we go. And so I'm going to budget out 500. And that leaves me with $5,704. So of that $5,704, for my Walmart credit card, um, this is the debt that I have been putting extra funds towards um, on and off since October. Even I can show you, oh, oh yeah, here it is. Um, here is the payoff tracker that I've been using. This is from D versus debt. Um, my starting balance when I decided to take this more seriously was 4,000 and some change. My highest balance having been 
um, 6,000. It's this tracker helps you break down when it's due. At the time, my minimum payment was 127. Currently, my minimum payment is $84. This is the APR and my goal payoff date. And so this is me just breaking down when I make a payment, when interest hit, what the balance is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I am going to pay off my Walmart credit card um, just to get it out of the way. And so based upon interest, when interest hits, how much I have been putting towards that, um, I estimate that I will be paying $2,500. $66.77. Now, again, that can be more, that can be less, um, but that is what I estimate that I will be paying off when the time comes. Um, next would be my savings challenges, and I intend to put $850 towards that. My sinking funds will get... $1,780 and my account buffer would get $507.23. So if I were to add all of this up, so 25, 66, 77 plus 850 plus 1780 plus 507.23 that gives me a total of 57.04. And if I were to subtract the two, that leaves me with a zero based budget. So everything has a job. Um, I feel confident that all of these categories are getting something. So there is money to spend on things that we need and maybe some things that we want. I am paying off a debt. I'm adding to my savings challenges, I'm adding to my sinking funds, and I'm able to boost my account with a nice buffer. So next, as I stated, sinking funds is getting $1,780. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna bring you in just a little closer. There we go. And let's break that down. So these are all of my sinking funds here the new additions being baby um lauren as this is now a sinking fund of cash she still has her savings account that i add to regularly and miscellaneous being a new one um just saw it saw it fit to have a fund where there is money that can go in there and sit in there and be used for any particular reason the reason that I want to use this for is just any extra things that we need for baby or to prepare for baby can come from this fund. So, um, babe is going to get $50. Baby gets 50. Birthdays is getting a pretty hefty amount and it's gonna get 180 and so this is going to be split across the three birthday categories an even split so 60 60 60 uh, 60 will go to lauren's fund birthday fund 60 will go to my birthday and then 60 will go into the general birthdays category um my car is another area that is going to get a pretty hefty amount it's going to get 175 so for car maintenance that'll be a hundred dollars but i am going to put 75 towards my tags because they're due in May. Um, and I'll probably just budget in the remaining amount, which is $45. And then I wanna actively start saving for that month to month so that I don't have to cash flow that anymore. Uh, Christmas is gonna get 100. Pretty much all of the priority funds are gonna get 100. So for instance, Debt is going to get 100. Emergency gets 100. Future gets 100. Um, gifts is going to get 75. So this should be a really nice cushion for events and things that come up. Glasses is going to get 60. So um, how I figured this was 
I've been putting $15 a month since my last appointment. My appointment is going to be coming up in March. Um, by putting $60 from my tax refund, this is just going to help me get some months ahead so that if there is a time that I cannot add to glasses or money is tight, I have at least given myself a cushion of about four months because $15 um, a month times four gets me 60. So that's just how I figured that amount out. For hair, $150. So this can be same. Again, this is amount that I would pay for if I went and got my hair done twice or if I got my hair done and Lauren's hair done. So giving us a nice cushion there. I'm still saving, but here's a cushion where we can get we can make an appointment and get our hair done. I can do my own hair at home. Lauren does give me a difficult time to do her hair, so I prefer to pay a professional to keep her hair healthy and pretty. Um, Lauren is going to get $50. I would like to keep her fund and baby's fund somewhat even. Medical is another priority fund that was depleted um, when I had to start paying my labor and delivery deposit, so I'm adding 100 there. Memberships is another one of those that I decided on the amount based on what I put towards it monthly and giving myself a cushion. So normally, right now, memberships is a fully funded sinking fund. So I'm only adding like $5 here and there. When I pay, and memberships, this is like Costco and Sam's. When I pay those memberships for this year, that fund will be depleted. And then I start back putting $20 a month. And so this is going to give me a nice cushion of about two months. So that again, if I if money is tight for whatever reason, this is a sinking fund that I don't necessarily have to worry about. Miscellaneous is going to get 50 as a nice little boost or jump start. Shopping is going to get 50. Technology, although it's a priority fund, it's like the low man on the totem pole. So that's why it's only getting 50. Uh, this little budget is getting 50. Again, I want to make sure that I can continue doing my monthly giveaways of at least a $20 gift card or a $25 gift card. And so giving myself a nice little cushion there. Travel, while not a priority, I know I'm going to have some travel coming up. And so I'm putting $100 there. Um, tuition, creating a one month contribution buffer of $150. Now, because I am going to need cash for these um, sinking funds, not these sinking funds, these saving challenges, I included them here. So if I add from babe all the way to tuition, that would be $17.80. And then for my challenges, I will have budgeted and I can put a little like $8.50 here and that will go for these four. Um, because I need to get cash for that. So the challenges that I'm going to be stuffing are my 100 envelope, my 52 week, my 5, 10, 20 dollar challenge. And then I am waiting for my mystery savings challenge, my scratchers from hands and bands. They should be coming in the mail today. So I'm super excited about that. Um, not budgeting for roll the dice because again, I will just use funds from my cash envelope or whatever else. So for my 100 envelope, I am going to budget 550 and this will help me complete, oh man, um, an entire row of envelopes. So from 10 all the way up to 100. So giving myself a nice little boost there. I don't plan on finishing it this year. I don't think I'll be able to finish it this year, but I like having that nice boost where I can complete a row for 52 week. This is $100, and so this will represent three weeks. It'll go week 19, week 31, and week 50. If you add those up, 19 plus 31 is 50. 50 plus 50 is 100. For my 5, 10, 20 challenge, I'm putting $100, and that will then be broken up so that I can have denominations in the 5, 10s, and 20s. And for my mystery, I believe the ones that I bought from Hands and Bands are the monthly ones, and I think... If I read correctly, they can have a minimum total balance of 100, maximum of 150. So I decided to put $100 and I should be able to 
complete the February scratcher or at least be close to finishing out that February um, scratcher. So all in all, my 1780 plus my 850 is 2630. So that is how much I will need um, in cash. I will do this part um, off screen. But yeah, that is pretty much it. It was, I wanted to try to hit every category and I was able to do that. So I have some money to spend. I have, I'm going to be eliminating my second to last credit card debt because after I get rid of Walmart, I have one more credit card to focus on. I will be hitting my savings challenges, my sinking funds, and will be leaving some funds in my account to give myself a nice buffer. So I will be back with this cash stuffing in a few weeks when this money comes in and we will be cash stuffing if all goes well, $2,630. So thanks for sticking with me. If you are a returning budget bud, thank you for coming back to watch another video. If you are new and this is your first video, I hope you enjoyed my quick tax refund budget breakdown. Please feel free to peruse the other videos and playlists on my channel. And I hope you stay and subscribe. Well, until next time. Bye, budget buds.